Hello everybody, and welcome back to Big Rigs Part 3. In the last episode, we talked about the first part of the Raikage of the Winds epic story in which we talked about his life as the Raikage and how he died and he sacrificed his life to teach the little blonde boy the Reaper Death Seal so that he could save his village from the nine-tailed fox. And in this episode, we'll be talking about his second life, because after he died, the Grim Reaper was like, did well, I'm not just going to reap your soul, I'm going to give you the privilege to be reincarnated. And he's like, ah, oh, thank you for, for letting me be reincarnated. And as you can see, I'm not even pressing anything, and the, the jitters kind of go really bad on this level, can't do anything about that. Um, so yeah, he got reincarnated as a truck, not a ghost truck, a real truck. And he was like, oh, this is strange. I can't, I can't, like, really, oh, jeez, this level is so bad. So, uh, yeah, if you don't want to watch the picture and you just want to listen to the podcast, that's fine, I completely understand that, because this, this level is really, really bad, and there's nothing I can do. I tried to fix this a uh, whole load, but we do know that, you know, he's, he's, he's got, like, post-traumatic stress from all of the great ninja wars that he was in, and obviously his trauma is, is a, a living trucks. So this is where it all happened, because you see this, I won't move for uh, too much longer. Um, yeah, you see this lamppost here? This one random bluish glowing neon lamppost. This is where this is where it all happened as a truck. This was where this was the place. This is why he's got the shakes so bad because he remembers the pain. Because that glowing lamppost was a sign that's going to be relevant a lot later on. And this is where he died as a truck. This is where his life as a truck ended. And we've obviously come back to this place. We've revisited this place. And he's like, oh god, I'm back here. I'm back where I died. I, d I don't want to return to my place of death. He's not happy, so this is why he's got the shake so so bad, because this is where he dies as a truck. He could just, why are you picking on him? Why you gotta pick on him? If you died and you come back to the place you died, I don't think you'd be, you wouldn't be like, oh, this is easy. You'd be like, oh shit, I remember getting stabbed right there. I remember there's, there's where my body was. Very sad tale. What the, what the hell, how am I driving on the bridge? Oh, nope, there we go, we're sinking through the bridge. So, uh, yeah, he drove across this bridge, and, um, the magical flowing bridge, and he was like, okay, the, the delivery is actually at the top of this mountain, which I'm going to try and get up to. So this was the, like, his last delivery, which was like, we've got to drive up to the top of that mountain over there in the background, I'm just going to run through the checkpoints to make sure that we don't miss any as we're driving over to that mountain, so... We're gonna. We're basically gonna do his story as we do the drive. So we drove across the bridge, and we come across a quaint little town, which is here. And he was like, "Oh, this is this is a nice, lovely town." So obviously his owner, just like, "Oh, we're just gonna go to this um, this beautiful eating establishment." He parked up the truck like this, and he's like, "I'm just gonna eat here." And while his owner was eating, the first Rikage got to look at the mountain, and he's like, "Damn." Such a peaceful village, such a really lovely mountain. I'm enjoying myself. I've had a good life as a truck. I mean, I can't really say much to do with the life of a truck because you know you you pick up loads, you drop loads off. You don't really control what you do. So that's that's why we're talking about his his final moments, which are a bit touchy. But anyway, he was like, "That's a fine mountain. I've had a good life as a truck. Hope this continues forever." Little did he know that, as you can see, that one lamppost that was different was a horrible sign of things yet to come. So, his owner got back in the truck and drove through this village. It's like, we'll keep to the speed limit, drive through this village. And then it then it started to, all the signs started to come into place. As you can see, oh, I hope you can fucking see, hello. If you can't, that's understandable. There was a um, bit of mist starting to roll in, a bit of fog starting to roll in, in, um, in what was known as the town owned by the Glitch Gremlin, because, holy shit, this is, uh, this is actually quite, <laughs> quite difficult to manoeuvre through these gates. So we passed through that one, but yeah, the fog was starting to roll in, and it's like, ooh, it's getting a bit foggy outside. Maybe, maybe I should take it slow, but 
obviously, it doesn't matter how slow you're going when fate has predetermined you. So they were making it all the way down and they made it to the mountain pass. This is the mountain pass coming up. And it's like, alright, we just gotta we just gotta make it to the to the mountain village. We've gotta deliver these instruments from Crimson Industries safely to the to the mountain village so that the kids can play their harmonicas. The kids can have brand new shiny harmonicas for Christmas, because it was Christmas time, so it was also a little bit a little bit icy because Icy Blade had been out just paving the roads with ice to make sure that people slipped off the side of the mountains and died because Icy Blade is a complete asshole and that's just how he is so um, it was a bit foggy, it was a bit icy, the kids were hoping for their harmonicas and flutes but god I can't see <laughs> it's, just, it's really hard first Raikage it's really hard to tell your story when this is going on and there is literally no way to fix this. I will, I will explain that a whole lot later when we've, when we've told the legend. Like on the final part when we're wrapping up, I will tell you the real reason for the shakes. I mean, obvi the obvious reason why he's starting to shake so bad. The real reason is because he's a point approaching his point of death, and you should never go past your point of death twice because that's never a good thing. But you know, I'll, I'll tell you the fake reason on the final video why this particular level shakes like this. But, so we made it to the mountain pass, he made it to the mountain pass and he's like, oh my god, we're, we're halfway done. If you look at Ultranav, which he got in his previous life, Ultranav was installed in his previous life because the trucker needed to know where he was going, but he's like, oh look at the Ultranav, we're halfway there, we're halfway to giving those kids a wonderful, wonderful Christmas. Everybody's going to be so happy that I, I, the first Rakage, it was me as a truck that delivered those children those presents, that delivered those children their musical instruments. They're going to be so happy and everything's going to be good. And then they come around the corner, missed the checkpoint, so I'm going to have to circle around. Come around the corner and so did a circle round. That's how happy the driver was. That he could feel what the ghost truck or what the first Rikari was feeling because it's kind of like Kill the Kill in which even though no one else could hear the ghost truck, the one that bought the first Rikage, the one that owned the first Rikage could hear the, the thoughts of the truck, kind of like how um, uh, Ruko can hear Zengetsu. Like it's, it's Kill the Kill style thing where it's like, I can hear your thoughts first Rikage. Really? Really, Big Steve? You can hear my thoughts? Yes, I can hear your thoughts. Oh, shit! Then you're as happy as me to, to um... You're as happy as me to get these presents to the children. And he's like, indeed I am. Now let's, let's go! So, this is where it happened. They were nearing their destination. The village was fast approaching. There was, um... The village in the background. But they had to cross a bridge. Now, as you know, Ghost Truck went through that bridge, and that was that was like also a sign. The reason why he goes under the bridges is because he never wants to cross another bridge again. Because here's the big bridge that he had to cross, and he was like, "Oh, we're driving home for Christmas, gonna make the delivery to the children." But then, all of a sudden, there was black ice on the road as he went through this turn, and he's like, "Oh shit, shit, I can't control it." Fucking first I can't get help. It's like I can't do anything. My wheels are spinning. My wheels are spinning. Ah! And then they fell into, they fell off the bridge into the river, which has since dried up. So this is like a thousand years into the future, when all of the human race is dead and there is only there is only like ghost trucks uh, alive. So they fell off into the river. They crashed and they the driver eventually drowned. And Ghost Truck was, uh, or First Rikage, whatever you'd like to call him, was pretty beat up. He was, his engine was busted, his axle on his wings had snapped in half. He felt a lot of pain and he was pretty much about to die. But as he was about to die, just at that exact moment of his death, the doctor was flying by because he was off to pick up a new assistant, you know, the doctor's always around and it's like, oh, there's no one left on, on Earth, but I'll, I'll have a revisit and see if there's like any life left and now I'll probably like pick up a, a lizard girl as my assistant or something, if there's any lizard people alive. We've not actually seen any human race or lizard race, so we don't know who survived and who lived in this current time period, which is like 
a thousand years from now in the year 3000. And died, and the doctor was like, um, oh, I wonder if there's any any human beings left alive to, to take with me as an assistant. And as he was as he was flying by, as he was flying over, he saw he saw the tragic events of um, the actual human race. No, sorry. This takes place after the human race has died. So the doctor was flying by to pick up his new assistant, and he's like, "Okay, who am I going to pick?" And as he, as he was flying by in his TARDIS, he saw the truck crashing. He's like, "Oh no, I've got to save that man's life!" So he tried to save that man's life. He he run, he flew down as fast as he could, but by the time he got there, it was too late. The the guy had already. He'd already drowned, he'd already passed away, but because he's a Time Lord and he knows like all of the, the magic of the universe, he saw that somehow the truck had a, a, a soul inside it, which was obviously the first Rekaria, and it's like, oh shit, I get the truck, I can still save the, the life of the, the magic truck, I don't know how it's got a human soul in it. It could be something to do with quant quant dimensional transcendental soul mind jumpy stuff, science talk. But I, I can still save the truck. But unfortunately, he couldn't really save the truck because it was already it was already dying. It was already on its last legs. The Raikage knew it was his time, and it was time to move on to to his next life, of which is probably his his most famous life. But it's like, ah, I can't let this truck die, and so the doctor like got a Jutharian resurrection crystal and used it on the truck, but it didn't actually resurrect the truck completely, it just resurrected the ghost of the truck. And then he's like, oh my god, he came back and he's like, why am I a ghost? Why am I still a truck? I should be in my next life, why am I, why am I, why am I a truck? Holy shit, why can I go through trees? Why can I go through buildings? It's like I'm some kind of ghost truck because the Doctor had actually resurrected him as a ghost truck. And you see that blue lamppost over in the background there? That was that was the sign, because it's blue like the TARDIS. It was actually the sign that all this was going to happen. So that was uh, that was the story of the truck's life. And in the next in the next episode we will talk about the actual third part of the legacy of Ghost Truck, which is the ghost truck himself and why he has all of the crazy powers like passing through buildings and why when we do this, I'm not actually going to do this too much, but why when you do this, it starts to speed up. I'm not going to do it too much, I was actually pressing the reverse button. But anyway, thank you for, let's just back up a bit here to get into position for the finish line. Thank you all for watching this part of Let's Play Big Rigs. If you are enjoying the story, feel free to leave a like for go for the regular truck and Big Steve who sacrificed his life delivering the instruments to the children. And if you are enjoying the series, feel free to subscribe. And as always, you're winner. You're all winners.